everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be talking about some communication tips and tricks for those of us who are shy, nervous, introverted, and submissives. So obviously this is going to be by a submissive for other submissives, although if you are dominant, identified, or switch, or something else, I think there are a lot of skills in here I'm going to talk about that you can apply to pretty much any relationship style and any side of the slash therein. May not exactly work on a one-to-one -one basis, but please adapt to fit if the label I use does not exactly mesh with your personal identity, it is totally up to you. Also, this is not about making you not introverted. I do not believe in changing people from one personality type or communication style to another. This is about meeting you where you are at. Then this is about fundamentally improving communication with your partner in a way that you are comfortable with. This is not about doing some sort of extrovert conversion therapy. I don't believe in that and I am very introverted myself so that would be quite hypocritical. That's some background. Let's get into some ideas as well. Do want to kind of briefly mention this is going to be kind of a little bit all over the map in terms of ideas, relationship stuff, negotiation stuff, general communication stuff because these are things I've developed in my own relationship and things that I've been thinking about for a long time that have helped me in different ways. So you know different ways to apply this depending on what specific issue you are dealing with. My number one favorite tool for anybody, introverted or otherwise in a BDSM relationship, is a journal of some kind. Journals are amazing because you don't have to talk to anybody to write stuff down in a journal. So it's way easier to be honest about your feelings and using a journal can be utilized for so many things. If you are a service submissive, you can keep track of your daily tasks in here. If you are a brat, you can keep track of your bratty feelings. If you're in a new relationship, you can record all of your feelings after scenes. You can use it like a diary. You can use it like a confessional for punishment. There are so many ways that you can use a journal in your relationship. And again, it's a lot easier way for an introverted or a shy or a nervous person to communicate their honest feelings on paper most of the time than it is for them to be able to express those feelings for another person. So, for example, if you are the kind of person that clams up and goes pale and doesn't know how to open their mouth anymore when your dominant asks you, little one, did you remember to take the time off the microwave after you microwaved your hot chocolate this morning? You're like, you don't know how to use words anymore because that's totally what happens to me. Write down in your journal and you can say, Sir, master, title of preference, here is my journal for the day. In here, I will write what I am feeling, how I slept, what I ate, if I followed my rules, if I remembered to take my medication that day, if I broke any rules, what did I do? And you can leave a spot for comments. And this can be something either that you keep personally to yourself and maybe use that as a reference for your own just individual use, or maybe it's something you hand over to your dominant every day, every week. But journals are a great idea. So I think the journal overall is probably the best option for keeping up with weekly tasks with general summaries of how you're feeling if that is something you struggle to be able to share verbally and you don't have to keep a physical journal there are many great tools out there for online journals you can keep a shared google document you can keep a shared google calendar with notes you can send daily emails tons of options there physical digital something like that now i think if you're looking for something to help you with in the moment communication if you're talking about a scene, if you're going through negotiations, if you are reviewing your contracts, if you're having any kind of in the moment, one-on-one -on -one conversation, I love whiteboards. And this is actually, oddly enough, something that I got from my college Spanish classes and I realized how useful writing everything down was in order to be able to fully process it. Again, a lot of introverted, shy, or nervous people who have trouble with just expelling their words to people without really thinking about them beforehand if you're able to write it down as your thoughts are happening they will oftentimes come out a lot more clearly and a lot better than if you have to go um i don't really know what i want and i'm just not really sure how i'm feeling about this right now it's a lot easier to write down your honest feelings on something like this so you can go 
Point one, here is my number one point. I want to do X. Two, I don't want to do X. Or maybe you can just have it where your dominant is asking you, how do you feel about X? How do you feel about Y? What about Z? And you could go, yes, yes, no. And you can write it down. And it gives you an opportunity to give really, really clear, concise answers where you don't have to go, um, I don't really know how I, I think about that. And I don't really know what I, I, what I should say here. So I'm not going to say anything at all. Use the whiteboard. Use the whiteboard. The whiteboard is your friend. Everybody who has trouble communicating, use the whiteboard. I don't know why I'm like so enthusiastic about this, but I'm a big, big, big believer. If you can, whiteboards are great. Also, because you don't have to worry about your words coming back to haunt you later because you just wipe them off so you can really get honest because you can go, ooh, that certainly looks bad or comes across as not respectful to our relationship dynamic let me just erase that right here and instead i'm gonna put down yes my dear lord and savior i would be most happy if i would be able to attend the gala with you whatever it is you want to say that comes across more respectful than like yeah sure i guess whatever dude or whatever you might stumble to say out loud because that definitely happens to me sometimes I think I briefly mentioned this already, but emails are also a great tool, especially if you are in a long distance relationship. Personally, I hate phone calls. I try to avoid phone calls at all costs. If you want to be able to communicate big ideas with somebody, but don't necessarily want to be able to keep a journal and there's not enough space on a whiteboard, I find email is really good because I think text message can be kind of invasive into somebody's life and you're sending it to somebody directly whereas with an email you can write out all of your feelings you can say yes lord master oh, i would love to attend the gala with you but here are some concerns i would like to have addressed and here are concerns one two and three and i would also like to request that uh, you might review my outfit before we decide to go for the evening and and you can write out your whole little list to yourself of exactly what you want to say send it to yourself save it as a draft give yourself extra time to think about what you're saying and then you can use emails as notes for when you talk in person you can revise them and send them directly to your dominant or you can just delete them because it's a communication tool you don't have to use it in any particular sort of way. And if an email or a Word document is what allows you to fully get your thoughts out there before you say anything so you don't feel nervous about being on the spot, that is absolutely fantastic to have. And you don't have to use them any particular way. Again, you can use them in a way that works for you. And for me, I also really like emails again because it's less instantaneous than a text message, generally speaking. I can see that I have received an email and it can have a tagline on it or it can have a subject line that says, not urgent, open when you have time, sir. These are some thoughts that I have been having. And you can send that to them and they know, okay, this isn't urgent. I can take my time to process this. Whereas uh, with a lot of communication that happens over text message, I think because it's an instant messaging thing, they have to see it. If they get notifications on their phone screen that show them the first three lines of a text and you're like, I'm freaking out right now and I don't know what to do and I'm having such a crisis with my submission right now. And ah, obviously that is going to cause a lot more reaction perhaps an unwanted reaction and if you get the time to fully digest an email it is not as likely to happen but it still gives you space to be able to write things out if you absolutely have to have a verbal one-on-one -on -one conversation and you're not able to have a tool like a whiteboard or a notepad or something like that with you i think being able to develop some kind of quick hand signal language with your partner of some kind. You can base it in ASL, you can ba base it in any sign language you want for that matter, or you can come up with your own personal signals to let your partner know how you're dealing with emotionally and if you need more time to process something. Particularly if you're dealing with heavier subjects, like if you're renegotiating your relationship as a nervous, shy, and introverted person, it can take a lot longer to process and to figure out how to respond than somebody who is naturally more introverted may be able to handle comfortably because silence is not generally something that a lot of extrovert people are super comfortable with, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. So if you can come up 
with a quick little language you can use to each other to indicate I need more time here sir I need 20 minutes I need to go away for a half hour to think about this or just I'm not able to talk right now and that's a really big one for me because what ends up happening when I have to deal with really really tough issues in my relationship or with people in general for that matter I just don't have words and I can't say anything and so I'm not even able to say I need 15 minutes to process, I have to figure out some other way to say it. And being able to come up with hand signals or, or a gesture or a check-in motion or something is just a quick tool to let your partner know where you're at emotionally. And maybe nothing wrong is happening. Maybe it's just, hmm, I'm fully considering that point that my master just made and I really wanna make sure that I'm giving his thought the full attention that it deserves before I give an appropriately adequate response. And if you wanna communicate something like that with your partner too, that is great as well. So I think that is pretty much everything I wanted to cover today, whether it be notepads, whiteboards, journals, emails, hand signals, whatever it is, there are so many ways that as an introverted person, you can make communication within your BDSM relationship so much better. It's not about fitting the mold of an extrovert. It's not always about being able to verbally share all your feelings honestly and openly. As long as you're able to find a tool that helps you do that in a way that is comfortable and accessible, that is the only thing that matters. And hopefully one of these things inspired you or helped you out in some way. And if they did, please let me know. How many comments, questions, suggestions for other tools that people could use? I would love to hear from you. Comment down below if you feel like it, you can. I try to read every single comment again and I really appreciate it. I love being able to interact with you guys. If you haven't already and you like this video, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week. And finally, if you really like my content, the best place to support it and see exclusive stuff from me is over on Patreon. A link to that down below as well. So please check that out if you'd like to have exclusive chats or access to exclusive videos or all sorts of other neat and interesting little perks. So just check that out if you want to. If you already support, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.